Hello everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Last night I made a video, Witchcraft in the Church, Conjuring Emotional Spirits. And um, I made the video, I uploaded it, I went on and went to bed, I laid on my pillow, and I believe I, ho I heard the Holy Spirit uh, speak to my heart um, about the following videos that I'm going to do relating to that. I heard um, him say, the power of suggestion, the power of agreement, and soul ties. And I just, I really just, I'm going to go forward in this because I believe it's going to, you know, just bring some, some clarity and some understanding to what's really going on um, in the body of Christ today. I want to also preface this by saying I talked about conjuring um, emotional spirits in the last video and I got to say that I, I understand that there's nothing wrong with emotions, our emotions. Our emotions were given to us by God. So emotions in and of themselves, uh, you know, are fine. The problem is when people use emotions, they play off of other people's emotions in order to benefit them. So, um, you know, emotions are a wonderful thing. Now, I'm going to kind of try to tie this together. I'm going to talk about um, how emotions can be a wonderful thing, how they are given to us by God, and how it just, uh, we're going to flow into the power of suggestion here. So, you know, talking about emotions, you know, I went to see the movie recently, The Help, and I, I recall that that movie was so powerful because one of the things it did is it brought out so many emotions. And, you know, uh, I, I, I felt angry at one point. I felt happy at another point. Another point of the movie, um, sad. And so it was so effective in bringing out so many emotions. And it's also good to be in touch with your emotions. You know what I'm saying? You got to be in touch with your emotions. Otherwise, they can have a tendency to get out of control. Um, and, and so there's a, uh, um, also, you know, God gives us the ability to be in control of our emotions. Um, and if we can't control them, he will help us. But at any rate, so now let's talk about the power of suggestion while we're talking about movies. I've been to a movie several, uh, several times when I was on a diet. Lord have mercy. And I would already predetermined in my, my mind that I'm not going to get popcorn. I'm not going to get soda or candy because I'm on a diet. And uh, I just can't do that right now. And so I walk into the theater and I get my ticket and I get past the point of the smell, you know, when you walk in there of the popcorn popping. You get past that point. You get to your seat. And all of a sudden what comes on the screen is this big, gigantic, enormous screen of popcorn popping soda fizzing pouring out of a you know machine into a cup and and looking so refreshing and delightful and the power of suggestion makes you get up out your seat even if you own a diet and go get what that screen told you that you need to have now so the power of suggestion is can be very effective and it can be effective even more so when you are emotionally invested so if i'm sitting there in a movie i there's an emotional investment that i have because uh, i i may have read the reviews i may be excited about seeing you know uh this new movie that just came out or whatever the case may be so that emotional vest investment even makes it uh uh even makes it more difficult for me to resist the temptation of that power of suggestion. So I get up and I go get what they told me to get on the screen that they said I needed to have that looks so good even though I'm on a diet. And then I justify it and I say, well, later on, uh, to you know, because I had this, then I won't have this later on today. You know, I won't eat dinner tonight. You know what I'm saying? How we do. And, um, 
And so that's the power of suggestion. And how does that relate to witchcraft in the church? You see, once you are emotionally invested, uh, like I said in the last video, they have conjured up and evoked emotional spirits. They have said all the right things in order to get a response, an emotional response from people. And so once they are emotionally invested, the power of suggestion can work and can be very effective. So here's the power of suggestion. You know, they'll give a testimony. You know, once I was broke about 20 years ago, and I uh, decided that I was going to give everything I had left in my bank account. And do you know, within seven days, God turned it around. And he, he gave me what I needed and more. You see, that's the power of suggestion in the form of a testimony. And so now you're emotionally invested because all those emotional spirits have been conjured and evoked in, in, in the atmosphere and in individuals. And the power of suggestion can now work. It can now do its job. You can now have an open ear to the things that are being suggested. And so now... I told you my testimony via the power of suggestion, and I'm going to ask you to respond. You see, if you do like I did, you're going to get blessed like I got blessed. That's witchcraft because you weren't able to make your own decision whether or not you had it to give, whether or not you chose to give. No, you gave because it was suggested to you to give. And let me just throw the scripture in here. We are not to give based on what? Compulsion, necessity. And that's what the Bible says. So it's witchcraft because the giving is based on the power of suggestion. And there again, it came in the form of a testimony. It comes in the form of, you know, if you give to this ministry, this is good ground. See, that's the power of suggestion. Because, you know what? You need to be the one to determine whether or not it's good ground. You need to be the one to determine whether or not, do I want to invest my money here or over across the town, across the street? And so all these things are at work. Your, your emotions, uh, and now the power of suggestion, and in the next video we're going to move into the power of agreement. Thanks for tuning in, and be blessed.